This is Internet Wars 2008. You might be expecting Gadi Evron, but, well, he flaked. So I got sucked into doing this. So my name is... Actually, hold on. You can look at your own screen. <laughs> well, I wanted to make sure. I don't know. Um, my name is John Ives. I work at UC Berkeley. I do IDS. So we're looking at high-speed IDS sort of work. We have a panel discussion here today with um, a few people. So I'm going to start off with Marcus over here. Actually, no, before I start off, me, is me in the room? You want to come on up here? No. Come on. Get up here. Come on. Get up here. Get up here. <laughs> come on up here. Actually, there are a couple other people who are also interested. Um, Bruce Potter at one point. Is he around? Jay Beal. Come on. You said you were going to be here. Okay. That's no, great. Marcus, <laughs> why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, we can grant clearances right here. Just come on up. You're done. Mark Sox, I run the Internet Storm Center. Adrian Dupree, I work with Mark at the Internet Storm Center. Louder. Louder. Speak up. Adrian Dupree, I work with Mark at the Internet Storm Center, and so I'm a country you're from. Eh? I'm a Canadian, so please excuse my horrible accent. <laughs> <laughs> He's a socialist, but aren't we all? <laughs> He's there, yeah. Uh, Don Blumenthal, I'm an attorney. Uh, teach and used to be um, Federal Trade Commission. And over here on this side? Uh, Nick Weaver. I'm a researcher at ICSI and just general pot, eyes in the cloud academic. So of what I say, 90% of it is wrong. I've read actually some of your papers, so you're not actually that bad. <laughs> okay, 89% is there wrong. There you go. <laughs> So since God gave me absolutely nothing to really go on, we're kind of throwing this together as we go. So I screwed up this slide. Let me get it all out. Um, the idea was we're supposed to talk about global operations and what's happening now. Well, that's Gotti's specialty. My specialty is looking at packets. Um, so we're going to talk off. I'm going to mention a couple of things that are happening in the global space that yeah, people might be interested in. Um, recently, in the last couple of days, there's been a lot of blog traffic about some Russia versus Georgia cyber war. So far, it hasn't reached the level. Of... Dan, come on up. I've got beer. <laughs> so, as I was saying, so far it hasn't reached quite the Estonia level yet, but it's still out there. Um, last year, Pakistan tried to like use BHP routing to steal YouTube. They didn't really like some of the content. That didn't work out so well for them because they couldn't handle the bandwidth. <laughs> Just, they, it was a self-DOS. Um, supply chain. Um, at Christmas, you might have noticed that there were like, you know, picture frames with viruses on them already. That's an interesting method of attack. I mean, it's not something that we spend a lot of time thinking about. Here we have Jay Bill. And then right now with the Olympics going on, there's a lot. Of, China has traditionally blocked a lot of stuff. So um, for this, I'm going to do the shout out to Tor and the EFF great people. Awesome product. Note, however, Tor can't be that significant because they aren't reset injecting Tor, because Tor is still over TCP and therefore vulnerable to reset injection. So I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that the Chinese actually don't care about Tor. True. I mean, the amount of bandwidth actually going over Tor is kind of weak. <laughs> Nothing says this guy is interesting like using Tor. <laughs> <laughs> or nothing says this guy is just pirating stuff over BitTorrent like using Tor. So since Gotti gave me nothing to go on, I'm going to rant for a couple minutes about the things I see going wrong on the Internet. And then I'll talk about a couple things that are actually looking kind of nice. So first of all, the attackers are everywhere. Yeah, like this is a surprise. Um, patch cycle. Jay Bill was talking about it yesterday and some today. You know, it takes some companies three months to get out a patch, but if you talk to like HD Moore and the Metasploit people, they'll have an exploit out in hours. There's a problem here because we're not going to be able to protect people if we don't patch them. I mean, we have a fix. We have it. Deploy the damn thing. Poor crypto implementation. That would be your Debian people. Infrastructure attacks, DNS. <laughs> and the BGP, track four, four o'clock, looks like an awesome one. <laughs> SQL injection, you know, damn it, validate your inputs. 
You know, it's, it's, everything's there, the libraries are there. Distributed boot force attacks. You know what's the problem with this? We're still using passwords for everything. <laughs> I mean, we've known passwords are bad since, well, let's see, war games. <laughs> So what, in 1983, I think, 84? I have a real problem with the black box mentality. I ha I'm running antivirus, so I'm safe. Bullshit. <laughs> Targeted but phishing. we're spending so much money. Money equals works. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been trying to and work with some stuff. lights are good, too. You have lots of blinky lights. Oh, yeah. You must be yes. secure. Must yes. have the blinky lights. That's the problem with the AV. It doesn't have enough blinky lights. <laughs> That's why it's not catching everything. Oh, and the more annoying dialog boxes you throw up that they click yes on anyway, the more secure your system is. <laughs> That's right. I've been doing some work on, like, um, IDS-assisted honey clients. I've been working on this concept recently. And... You upload stuff like virus total after you find it. It's amazing how few places find it. And I take that same exe a week later, still only four places and four things can find it. I can actually look at the code and say, yeah, that's a problem. You should have figured this out long ago. Niels, so, Niels Provost at Google does studies of malware on the net. Uh, the stuff he finds, he has this graph of three antivirus products. One of them that unfortunately he doesn't say which is because of the corporate lawyers only detects 30% of the malcode he finds. And the best only detects 80. Okay, oh, hand it to the chair. Phishing, targeted phishing, yeah, yeah, we all know that. Final one, problem exists between keyboard and chair. It's the loser error. And I don't know how we're going to fix that. We're all human. Um, our users are human. Some of them are smarter humans than others, but that's the way it is. May I recommend a Stanley FUBAR? It's the universal user fix-it tool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've, now I'm going to talk about what I think is going right. I struggled with this slide for hours and hours. At 2 o'clock in this morning, I had this on the screen. <laughs> That's what I had. Um, okay, so I came up with we're sharing more, more than we ever have before. We're still not sharing enough, but it's a step in the right direction. We teach our children to share. Yeah, but they forget that. And then they in grow up and become teenagers, and they try to share. <laughs> and we tell them, "Little Johnny, you can't share." <laughs> or the motion picture industry will come and drag your little ass into jail. But yet we still share. Sharing is good. Yes. Well, let me, you know, that was funny. Um, uh, good point, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I think honestly, actually, uh, I'll just go off on this one thing, but um, sharing is sharing's really nice. Actually, this is one of the things, we still have disclosure debates. We still have, that's great. I think one of the nice things though, and one of the, one of the, themes that a bunch of us have been trying to bring to this conference is um, we got to keep talking. We've got to keep talking about everything because we find, you know, a lot of us have all been finding weaknesses in applications. We've been finding weaknesses in the internet. We've been finding weaknesses, you know, if we listen to this guy in the leather jacket here, um, we find weaknesses in the fundamental glue of the internet, um, whether you call that DNS or you call that BGP and so on. And a lot, sometimes nothing happens or nothing happens for a long time because we don't get people to understand. We don't get people in our own industry to understand. We, get, we don't get the IT people. We don't get the users to understand. Well, maybe we give up on the users, but, but we don't get even ourselves to even take something as seriously as it should be taken or really think or even take a quick look. And I think one of the biggest things we can do is talk to each other. Talk, about, talk to somebody else about what you're seeing, what you're finding, what's weird. Somebody may say, hey, that's, no, that's just fine. You're stupid. But somebody may say, wow, that's a good point. We should look at that. And you start getting some of the greatest ideas kind of just talking to lots of different people and seeing what happens. Um, Take a drink. Yeah. Take a drink so I can go on. <laughs> Get over on Twitter and just start sharing. It's a whole lot easier, right? Open source tools. I, I love open source. The problem we're having is that everybody's inventing the same thing over again. And there are so many open source tools. Finding the right one, we're almost getting inundated with them to the point that it's hard to figure out which one you need. I don't know how to fix that one, but I still love the open source stuff. I love, like, OSSEC. God, I use that one a lot. IPv6 adoption. This one's going slow, but it actually is moving now. The last FreeBSD box I set up, I actually did it over IPv6. It's great because there's nobody using that damn site, so it came down really quick. <laughs> So, so what does IPv6 have anything to do with security, out of curiosity? 
Isn't there a website on V6 that's got all the porn for free? But you have to be on V6 to get it. Never out. mind. It sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And finally, more people are aware. Now, are they making good decisions? I think we'll have to wait and see on that one. But there, it, it, people are more aware. They're actually making an effort. Is it the right effort? Uh, I don't know. At this point, oh. I would add one more thing. The attackers, the big scale attackers, have been not very creative and not very ambitious, thank God, because the storm guys, if they really wanted to do something interesting could totally rip us a new one. But, well, they haven't yet. Uh, no! <laughs> Ripping us a new one is not profitable. Look, the bottom line is if you break too much stuff, it just makes the security industry more money, more resources, more defenses. Don't break things. Just silently screw with stuff, and it'll go on day after month after year. Unless, of course, you work for a security company, in which case big noisy worms that include strings like insert witty comment here attacking your competitors' intrusion detection systems might be a good idea. Who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually uh, that's a point I, I made in my talk and I uh, like to make everywhere is, listen, if you're going to man in the middle of my stuff, would you please make sure to actually fulfill your full responsibility, man in the middle, and send it to where its real destination is. <laughs> I come to these conferences and like, you know, some punk kid is, you know, ARP spoofing the, uh, ARP spoofing the router, but he's not actually routing, which means he's not getting most of my good stuff, but he's also really pissing me off. You know, just, just route my traffic, let it get there, and that'll be fun. But no, as, as, Dan, points, as Dan points out, really hardcore. Um, we really, there's so much we don't know that's going on because it's not all stupid and, you know, it's not all stupid and huge and non-subtle. Um, and I think that's one of the things that we keep getting wrong in the security community at large. We keep forgetting that just because we haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not happening. Yeah, in fact, if you look at your outbound flows, if 90% of them are encrypted and they're heading to a country that you've never heard of, <laughs> there's probably a problem there. Or one that I have heard of. Well, we won't go down that. Well, we'll go down that road. Let's yeah. go down that road. Yeah. What country have you heard of, Jay? <laughs> well, it turns out I, I had a public school education, so not that many. <laughs> <laughs> but the but the letters R, U, and C, N are really, really interesting ones, and there's so many more. And, and C, N is short for Canada, right? <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, that's absolutely. What that's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So don't mess with Lichtenstein. They'll they'll cut you. <laughs> And so the Vatican, to... they'll send your packets to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, we need some people to ask questions. You have a really good question, you get a beer. So come on. Come on up. No, one thing is you're going to have to be loud because we didn't get speakers. We didn't get microphones for questions. What about it? Question one. What's wrong with the current one? <laughs> so, yeah. Question to be repeated was, what about Internet 2? When I hear Internet 2, I think of Chris Abad's Web 4.0, the Internet without idiots. <laughs> it's a glorious dream, but it ain't reality. Hey, I'm or on the two. other way is Internet 2 is a way for us wild-haired <laughs> academics to get a lot more bandwidth so we can get our porn faster. Well, that's right. <laughs> Optimized <laughs> porn sharing. Yep. Who, who, whoever decided to rebrand high-speed networking, like more cables, more fiber, as... Internet too. Brilliant. Brilliant, my hero. And then there's the Lambda Rail. Are your bits going down a Lambda Rail? <laughs> and don't forget Genie, the ultimate place to hide your stash. So more questions. Okay, right up front. The question was, what are we going to do about telecommunication companies who claim that we have reached peak bandwidth? Guys? Switch providers. I, I hate to say this, but uh, they are somewhat right for the cables that exist between them and your house. So go with Fios and pull new wire um, and accept that it costs money. If you can't make money making the Internet faster, Hey, maybe you can make money making the internet slower. 
Oh, and even if you do have a lot of bandwidth, bill by bit very early on because every ISP is either a telco that wants to be a cable company or a cable company that wants to be a telco, and the biggest source of the bandwidth coming down the pipe is video, which is competing with your pay-per-view services. Next question. Way back there. You're going to have to speak up, though. Stand up. Stand up, and if you can come forward, that'd be great. Uh, Let's repeat the question. The question is research on the Storm botnet. Um, there's sure, on, been yeah. two big groups academically on it. Uh, San Diego and ICSI is one of them, and the other one is, I can't remember which. Look at the papers in LEET. Um, there's a, basically, the, there are multiple groups of researchers so up Storm botnet's control network that they're looking out its mouth. Um, there's another upcoming paper in CCS on the topic. So there's a lot of academic things on the storm botnet control system and deeply understanding it. But it shows you how little the storm authors care about it in that uh, they haven't done anything about it yet. And we poor academics are constrained because, yes, we could send out a command and make the storm botnet evaporate into the ether, but doing so would get us thrown in jail. Okay, right up here. Why don't you stand up a little? One of the biggest parts of my job is administration and everything else. Well, hang on, you're close enough. Why don't you speak into the mic? Yeah. One of the biggest parts of my job is interfacing with the general public, and I'm wondering how you would take your concerns and the concerns of this conference and explain them in a way that can be understood by the general public to where they demand more of their providers uh, and get them to do the right thing. Well, similar to the uh, issues between Canadians speaking with Americans and vice versa, I think that people who speak tech or speak, even worse, security geeks, we don't speak a language that business people or politicians understand, and vice versa, we don't understand them really. When they speak, you know, that legalese nonsense, it's totally Greek to me. So, there, you know, the, the uh, inability to communicate is just extreme, and, and it's not going to go away anytime soon. We, but, but I, but I would like to hope it's doable, but uh, we're geeks. We're all borderline Asperger's syndrome. Uh, so, Some of us not so borderline. Yeah. <laughs> so I might have been doing some outreach lately. Um, it's, it's actually very interesting. I mean, as security professionals, we have asks. We have ways that we want the world to work, and we want, ultimately, other people to implement our desires. Look, if, if I have, if in the number of hours, in terms of getting what I want, if I spent .001% of the total hours was me, that'd be shocking. Most of everything that I've gotten has been the work of other people. And if you actually want to have an impact on the real world, it's not about talking to your peers. It's not about high fives and cool stuff. It's about, hey, we as the security community believe that there is something that you might be interested in. And um, it's hard. Maybe it even gets you some crap. But if you want results, Outreach is, is as much a duty as it is a, a, uh, a task to be performed. And c consumer ad is a big piece of the, piece of the process. Um, and there are people who specialize in, in dumbing things down if you're talking about consumers. And there are people who specialize in, in getting people together er, to develop things such as enterprise security plans. Um, there aren't enough of them. And there are not too many people who talk at cross purposes still, but um, it, it's a growing field, and, and I, I, I think it's actually accomplishing some things, at least in my my small part of the world around uh, around Ann Arbor. 
Well, the problem that we're having is that we create the plans, we create the policies, but nobody's listening to them. I mean, it doesn't matter who we're talking to. If we're talking to the geeks or if we're talking to the average users, they're not listening. We've told them so much over the years that they've just started tuning us out. So I think the problem that we're going to have to encounter, we're going to have to deal with, is refining, okay, what is the stuff they absolutely need to know? Because they have an attention span of 10 seconds. And we need to actually get down to the place that we can give them, this is exactly what you need to know. Click the one that says update. <laughs> you know? Well, uh, from experience with multiple clients and corporations, agencies, basically I tell them one, uh, one thing that makes them listen, lawsuit. You're going to be sued. Your data is posted on the site. It's public uh, or your data has been circumvented or been accessed uh, un by unauthorized people. Bottom line is they actually listen. Oh, by the way, we could be sued for this. You can see how fast they actually react to that. So, so hang on, hang on. Outreach is not about necessarily threatening people. Outreach is about communication, about shared desires and shared customers. If you just run up to people and say, I'm going to kick your ass, whether it's true or not, and we seem to be pretty good at making it true, that's not necessarily <laughs> the best way to say hello to someone. I mean, uh, at least give people a chance to ignore you, especially especially if it's someone or an organization that has never worked with the security community. I mean, I want you guys to realize how bizarre it is to be approached by someone and say, hi, I know you're not paying me, but I've done some work that you would normally pay people to do and pay them a lot of money, and uh, you now have to do a bunch of things, but I'm not a customer, and I'm not anyone that would ever be a customer. Do what I say, or else. Let me tell you one more thing we need to fix, and this is on all of us. We as a community, security professionals, we don't speak with one voice. You get the business folks, those who don't understand where we're coming from, they hear 15 different opinions about what's happening. Think about when Dan put his patches out back a month or so ago, immediately raped inside our little world. Media is running stories all over the place. Who do you believe? Who's telling the truth? If something comes out in the, uh, the healthcare world, like the um, uh, SARS or things like that, the story's pretty much agreed upon. The medical community gets their act together before they go public. We've got to figure out how to get our act together. We've got to start speaking with one voice. Then we can begin attacking those who don't understand what we're talking about. But as long as we're in chaos, I, I don't think that there's any way that they're going to understand what we're trying to say, the message that we're putting across. Right up here. Right up here, yeah. Hang on, grab the mic. I've got, I've got two points to make, I guess. The first one is that there is a step beyond outreach, which is actually doing it yourself. Rather than just going to people and saying, oh, you need to do this, you actually either join them or partner with them and actually do it. I've done, I've done that myself in various capacities. And, you know, you don't get as much airtime, you don't get the newspapers, but you actually get a lot more done. The second thing um, is, is more around what a lot of the security people seem to be doing these days, which is banging on about the problems. And I think that a lot of security people, yeah, fair enough, they find a problem, they should be fixing it. They should be coming out and saying, I found this problem, here's the fix, here's the patch, rather than just basically saying, right, we've notified Microsoft, we've notified all these people. Um, they should be partnering more, working with people to make sure that they're not just shouting about problems, they're actually fixing them. I have a, um, a campus of 40,000 IPs at any given moment and about 50,000 users. It's a little hard to actually come out there and fix the problem for them. Also, so it's like we need to get a clear, that's why we need a clear, concise instructions. And we need to give it to them in a way that isn't, you have to do this or you're going to get hurt. It is, you want to do this because. It's the, it's the mentality that you project. You want to make it so that they want to do it. Yes. The problem is, is even when it's easy, it can be hard. Look at the struggle Mike Perry has had trying to get Google to change their cookie management. And it's relatively minor changes, and they can naturally infer things and go, if you typed in HTTPS mailgoogle.com, make sure that nobody can steal your cookies. But they basically refused to do so and only implemented a fig leaf buried in the preferences that you have to know about first. And that was only a week, a couple of weeks ago because they finally heard it that he was giving a talk on the subject. So sometimes it can be really frustrating when you 
have your friends at the company, security contacts at the company. You have half a dozen people all banging on something and nothing happens. Um, Okay, we've got a lot of beers here, so we need some good questions. Come on. We got somebody back there. I think it's hard to address. Hang on, hang on. Um, Let's repeat the question. Yeah, the question good. seems to be, we're seeing a lot of attacks from China. Is it really some kind? Let's just be clear, it's China. Is, is, it, is it really a government thing, or is it just we have a lot of you people with a lot of computers, deal with it, that's what happens when there's that many people? And that's the question. You guys know the answer. I think the uh, actual motivations of the targeted attacks, the ones that we don't see all that often, the, don't see them all that often, that occur, probably occur fairly often, um, are almost irrelevant. The, they may be state-sponsored, i.e. China or France or Russia or whatnot. It might be organized crime. They might be um, curious people. They might be you know, uh, politically motivated private sector areas. Uh, it might be uh, corporate espionage. Um, what you have to be aware of are what are the threat agents that are interested in your particular organization and what are the types of uh, countermeasures you can put in place because for those types of uh, subtle targeted attacks, you know, they're very difficult to detect, they're very difficult to defend against, but they are out there. Um, are they motivated by state-sponsored? Are they motivated by politically motivated private sector group in Russia? Is it organized crime? Really hard to tell. In fact, you know, even the ones going back a few years, uh, you guys called it Titan Rain. Was it really, really state-sponsored China or something else? And there is no firm answer. No one really knows here. Probably someone in China knows, but they're not telling us. <laughs> Okay, Hell like fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know the, um, Personal opinion only. Repeat the question for him. The question was, should cyber warfare actually be considered a class, uh, as an act of war? And you end map me, I nuke you. <laughs> well, I was talking to somebody here a couple days ago, um, and he, we were having a conversation. He was saying how the Russian government has basically said that cyber war, they actually treat that as ma a weapons of mass destruction sort of situation, and they will respond in kind. They left it vague over how the in kind was going to be. So the Russian government is treating it as an act of war. Well, the Russians so want us to be? sign a treaty with them. They'd like us to ban all of the hacking tools, make them illegal, pass laws to take it all away. They don't realize, of course, the most popular tool out there is a frickin' browser. Come on up here. This is the phone. See how that law is working in Germany. Uh -huh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. Mustn't do that. So somebody else. Come on. More. Okay, we got one right back there. Well, let's start a line. Like we know, even if there's yeah, a, a phantom microphone. Yeah, why don't we start a line over here to make it a little easier? Phantom microphone. Now, when we run out of beer, we run out of beer. Unless you have a really good question, then maybe you can see me afterwards, and I'll see about it. Are we allowed to steal more beer? Yes. I actually but you have to ask a good question. Yes. <laughs> hey, the panelists can... can drink all they need in order to actually do, to talk right. <laughs> Go for it. I, I am just not drunk enough to secure the internet right now. <laughs> ah, come here. Come here. <laughs> So in January at the SANS conference, the confirmation of exploit or extortion attacks on SCADA networks was confirmed. Um, <laughs> all right. All they um, said is that they have detected activity oh. outside the United States. Okay. 
Now, okay, attacks on attacks or outside the United States. All right, activity like that. That's all they'll admit to. Is not. Uh, what does that tell you? Is not silent. Speak faster. So, <laughs> <laughs> where do you guys stand? I mean, as far as it being not silent, that's not something that will go unnoticed. What's the question? <laughs> What's your guys' opinion on that? <laughs> on what? Here's my opinion. Take his beer away from you. <laughs> you get a negative beer. Here's my opinion on SCADA systems. I've come to the conclusion that if you understand SCADA systems, you won't sleep at night. I don't want to understand SCADA systems so I can actually get to sleep. Yeah. Okay, next. we got somebody over here. Go on, just come on up. Uh, you. Right there. I have no idea. Hang on, hang on. We got to repeat the question. Question was, how much of the actual, how many of the actual tax are being funded by com business competitors in an act of industrial espionage versus, I don't know, people who just like breaking into things for no apparent profitable reason? You know, to quote unquote, make money themselves. Yeah, what makes that hard is there are nation states out there that are doing corporate espionage on behalf of the corporations in that country. So how do you know if it's legitimate, if it's RBN, if it's an individual company, it's that attribution problem. What we do have is we have at least one data point, which was the, uh, the Israeli Trojan, which was uh, visual basic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude writes a freaking Trojan in VB about the least lead hack that has ever happened in all time. It was written by Gaddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's not here to defend himself, so I'll say yes, it was. Silence <laughs> equals consent. <laughs> so this Israeli Trojan guy writes, he's like, how am I going to get it anywhere interesting? He freaking puts it on a CD and has it run via auto run and sends a mail to 50 top executives. As in like, literally just a package with a very nice and friendly message that says, hello, sir, I, uh, I have a presentation of a business proposal. I would very much appreciate if you take a look. And by sending the mail, he got around every firewall, every defense, and it ran by default. So he didn't stop there. He now had 50 top executives machines, and he starts renting them out <laughs> for like 15,000 British pounds a month. For three years. Oh. This is visual basic. <laughs> Poning Yosh. That was definitely Gaddy here. <laughs> <laughs> so, was this, you know, some random guy looking to make money? Was it industrial espionage? Do the lines matter? Do the lines even make sense anymore? It's 2008. The game is about monetization. If you can monetize VB, you can monetize anything. <laughs> Next question, right back there. <laughs> yes. Question, has any CAS has had any effect on mitigating the root name server attacks? Yes. That's You're talking about the October 2002 attacks, and then we any cast it after that, and then in February of 07, it was a, a non-event? Yes. OK, is next is question. <laughs> Come on, we need questions up here. We've got, still got beers. Okay, what, people don't like beer? Rant. We'll or can we just rant, right? So, you know, how, how can we complain about how the internet performs yeah. when it actually operates as designed? There is no, you know, way to fix the internet. Well, it operates exactly how it was supposed to operate. So what we really need is a solution to fix the internet. So how now, do we actually come up with real solutions to fix? We build new problems? people. We can't change no, the internet. So. <laughs> so no Mal patch for no patch for stupidity. The more you know. Malice yeah. is a feature. <laughs> okay, we got a question right here. Why don't you hand the mic? Yeah. Not to uh, bring up a topic you guys seem to not really want to talk about, but I'm a skater geek, and no, I don't sleep very well at night. <laughs> But uh, what, do you, what does the panel feel uh, should be our policy kind of as a community and then also as a country? And I know some of you are international, sorry, Canada. But uh, 
Yeah, the 51st state, Canada, uh, with using SCADA attacks for attack and defense. I mean, I've seen tons of SCADA systems, and I, my biggest fear is that we're going to go out and hack somebody with SCADA attacks, and they're going to come back after us, and we're boned if that happens, just in case anyone doesn't know. <laughs> It'll be a mess. So. I, I want to I answer that question by not answering that question, <laughs> which is to say... Uh, the first thing I'll say is if anybody here is, owns any SCADA, uh, uh, and that's either version of the word, that's exactly either, ver, either, either, either meaning of the word own, would you please take it off the internet? Yes. Please, for the love of God. But Jay, when they put Modbus on TCP and you go to IDA uh, website, and even on there it says, why did we put this into, into TCP? They say, so that the engineer can work on the, the nuke essentially from home. It saves money. They don't have to go in to, to evaluate their devices so that I can manage from one country to another. This is on their website today about these SCADA protocols running across the Internet. How do we get around that, that I'll kind of mindset? <laughs> You're going to head back to your farm in southern Pennsylvania, right? Um, yeah. I've been tempted to get a cabin up in the Sierras uh, with a solar off-grid and a couple of acres of uh, arable land. Um, the other thing is Dave Best nuclear power plant in Ohio got its control system taken down because of Slammer, which got onto a system through a VPN of a subsidiary contractor, some other crap like that. If you can't keep nuclear power plants from getting infected by the most obnoxious worm on the planet, um... Well, you know, it doesn't We're even fucked. take that. That's somebody, what the um is. We're fucked. Somebody in a car yesterday hit a telephone pole near Memphis, knocked out the uh, FAA traffic control center because they cut a fiber optic that was above ground for crying out loud. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the intertubes are fiber optic, yes. Yeah. So there, there is a great quote. Uh, All networks are connected, just the bandwidth varies. <laughs> systems are not necessarily easily reachable to the internet, but all systems are reachable from the internet. Yeah, if there's an electrical path, they can be owned. Like undersea cables from in Russia. Yeah. Okay, we got one person back, back here. There's one over here. So, so I, I think the question is, seriously, do you actually think you can break a SCADA system because the, these embedded hardware devices that no one understands and never been fuzzed are totally perfectly engineered? No, no, I'm saying, you, about. I'm saying you can break in, but what can you do? Safety is a global system property. Enough said. No, no, no. I, actually, uh, you want to talk about what can be done? <laughs> well, so, so one, so one of my buddies, he goes ahead. And he's like, "Hey, Dan, I got a video for you. See, this guy, this guy is a skater geek who will break your brain." I can have it. Yes. <laughs> so check it out, right? I mean, there's only like six All right, all right. So, so check it out, right? Um, he shows me a a so shows me this chemical mixer. And it's just sort of sitting there. And uh, they, sh they move the camera over. It's like a kind of edited video to the operator's display. And everything is looking great and fine and wonderful. Yeah, that's because they art spoofed in front of the operator's display. And we're showing them great and normal and wonderful telemetry. What was really happening was the ultimate buffer overflow. By which I mean white fluid overflowing up out of the chemical mixer and spraying down all over the entire place. And this goes on for about... 10 seconds when the lights go out because the, uh, the, the power was shut down in the, uh, in the fake factory. If you want to argue That was an X-Windows hack, not a SCADA hack. Uh, we've had X-Windows hacking for a while now, guys. Does it matter? Yes. I, I, no. Because I, no. I, it's, it's not Modbus hacking. It's not distributed control hacking. It's not... Shit, it's not even SCADA hacking. These guys are showing industrial control systems for minor plants. So Can you take down a power grid from the internet? No. So here, here's the thing. Let me, let me, let me, not let me, via SCADA, let me, not via ICCP, let me, not let me via DMP. What you just said is 
but that's not my fault. Those aren't my protocols. That's someone else's fault, and that's okay. I mean, you can say that. The, the reality is, is that we have massively interconnected systems, and uh, it doesn't matter whose fault it is. What matters is, is that it can go down. Look at it this way. The Dave Best nuclear power plant in Ohio. What if it wasn't Slammer? What if it was a code agent acting on behalf of somebody wanting to fuck up that nuclear power plant? That is, by my definition, would be a SCADA attack. Question. Your, your, yeah, they, I, I got moved up. No, no, I got, I got I don't know how the hell that happened. <laughs> I, I got a question for you. And, I mean, I don't know the answer to this. This is a just, I'm clueless. I might. What happens when you dumb fuzz gated devices? Uh, generally, they um, stop. How good is it for devices on SCADA networks to just stop? Uh, generally, that's not a problem. Okay. I, I mean, I, I hate to say it that way, but generally, it's not a problem. If a process goes into a fail state, the process fails and the process stops. What you need to be able to do is you need to be able to take control of the system and do something with it. And, if you and just you, stop it, like just dosing the system, the cookie plant knows how to shut down. It doesn't make Oreos that kill you. What happened? To <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait. How, I like that line. The belt how, just how, stops. Hey, how, how long was the cookie plant shut down for? I don't know, day, two days. You know what? The same thing. Was it shut down a month? Same thing happened. Was it shut down a month? Ah, maybe. In oh. any case, <laughs> but wait, the plant That's shuts, right. the plant <laughs> shuts for down month? for a month when Edna drops her finger into the cookie machine. <laughs> so you know. Generally, you can't rupture those through the control system. Generally speaking. Generally, is only what ninety percent of the time. It's uh, the other five percent yeah. that I'm worried about. What, what, what you're talking about is you're talking about being able to take control of the okay, process. The if it stops, if it just stops, then it stops. So, the but if you take control stop. of it and you execute, the control. No, it's both. Him next and a couple but if you take control of it and do something where, or worse, you interstitially okay, place so yourself in the it. middle and you say, you know what, I'm going to show you what you're not able to see. Okay. So, sir, yeah. I want to make one quick reply here, sure. and that is basically what you are hearing here is internet security before it all went uh, it all went wobbly. SCADA in 2008 is about the internet in 1988 to 1993. Absolutely. That is the reality. That is the attitude. That is the data. That is the dream. That has no relevance to reality. I wish it did. I wish it was safer. We've got another question here. John, so let's hang go on, John. On just one, one more piece on this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. One more. One more thought here, and that's the piece we all have to realize. In your world, in the control system, asset owner world, safety is the number one thing. Safety overrides everything. Security is our world, and we've got two different cultures. This is something we have to exactly. Yeah. Right. And if safety doesn't okay, happen, question. systems shut down. Two million gallons? Yeah. Not bad. From a lighting <laughs> oh. It's a DOS. Yeah. God hacked you. <laughs> okay, we have. Actually, I'm going to get the guy behind you because you already had a question. I'll come back to you if we have time. Wireless. You talk about Marucci? Wireless. Marucci, yeah, the the guy who used to work there is a contractor. Got pissed off, took a little radio system outside, opened up sewage. That one, yeah, it stunk up the place for a while. <laughs> should, should point out that all of the security wonks are actually at a different conference because they yeah. weren't aware that this was the week that Black Hat was scheduled. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, that's the skater world that we're up against. The trick is, what do you do with these people? No, that's the world of Joe Weiss. You, you know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got one question over here. Yeah. Hey, hang on. Actually, no, that was a really important thing you just said. It is. It's, it's, it's not about the complaining and the whining and the poking at SCADA. It really is about what do you do with these people? They're not, they're experts in their field. They're masters of what they do. You know, 
I can't manage or fix or do anything more than look at a power plant. That's all I, all I can do is play with code and maybe break a few things. So the question is never, oh, look at those guys over there. It's what do we do to outreach the, the changing state of the threat environment? It's a much, much more interesting and harder problem. Do, you know I'll even is? go so far as to say, you know, me whining about SCADA being easily breakable, whether it's true or not, is not the answer of how do we fix things. Dan, I'll even apologize what worked for me for that attitude. was swallowing my entire ego and going and saying, so tell me how this shit works. Okay, and we have somebody hurt. over here. We need to keep moving. So the question is, what is the worst case scenario? This is okay. SCADA, right? You start yeah. asking que SCADA questions? The, the, yeah, the, worst the, case scenario. The example was losing all the video for a UAV network, which yes. would um, make it hard to pilot. That's what I've seen so far. Yeah. Wor worst case People scenario. People can die. That's a worst case scenario. <laughs> Wor worst case scenario, um, the operators lose visualization, correct visualization, of a significant power grid for more than four seconds. But he was talking about specifically in like operations for like military People no. die at that point. Yeah, well, if, you, if the operators lose visualization for four seconds, Safety first. people die. This is, this uh, because is, that's called the blackout. Yeah, pretty much. This is, where, this is where, and this is just one of many things I'm trying to bring up, but this is where I keep getting into man-in-the-middle attacks of any sort. Any, any, my, any ability for me to, we always, I, I've, been, I've been kind of ranting on this a little bit, but any, confidentiality, we all get into confidentiality, we all get into availability. And a lot of our thought here has been in availability, but integrity. Oh, yeah. God, is that the one we don't talk about so much? And, oh, God, is it the fun one to play with? If I can give the operators one view, if I can give the operators just, you know, like in the movies, if I can give the operators one view and the reality is something different, then that's where things get really fun because then I'm not fighting with anyone. Then I'm just simply doing whatever I want and hoping I can keep pulling okay. that off. We're down like five minutes. Now, a quick one on integrity because he's been talking about it all weekend. I used to work in the College of Chemistry there, and if you get the wrong, if somebody were to break in and change the formulas for some stuff, you can have some little shithead happenings. So integrity from OCHEM class, just having some idiot cross-contaminate the reagents is a pain when the vessel opens and you get something close to tear gas. There you go. Okay, another question. So I'm going to drink all the beer if I have to. Beer, so come on, ask a question. Actually, I've got one in my hand if I have to, and we have one over here. Though I'm thinking, I'm getting really close to drinking this one. So, so, okay, Dan has a comment. He always has a comment. I think we need to make, I think we need to stop presuming when we ship software that we're done. That software has an endpoint that is when the box leaves the room. Okay, I'll grant him that one. And, and I believe that ultimately the serviceability problem, which is how do you fix things when you screw up, and you will, it needs to stop being a surprise, stop being a, oh, my God, we did what, and start being, we're going to ship it, and it's going to have problems as much as we tried for it not to, and how do we make it so that these things can be easily updated and, and fixed? We have such a problem creating fixes and dealing with the lack of modularity in the systems that we are deploying. I ultimately really do believe if we're going to really deal with all the flaws that are out there, the fundamental way we build software and build systems needs to be revisited. Okay, we have a question somewhere in the back. I'm told I can't really see anybody here, but I want to actually stand up. Stand up. Come on. Talk. Oh, come on. Come on up here, because I can't hear you. We cannot hear you. I'm blinded. I can't read lips, okay? We won't tell Joe you said that. <laughs> so on, the, on, the, on repeating the question, the badge is a little bit of a problem here, because it he says it doesn't work all that well, and it's really hard to update. I think the other issue with update is not only do we make it hard to update things, but we also keep forgetting that any time we're updating software for a vulnerability, we're in a really, we're in a race. 
We're in a race and we always lose. I don't mean we all always lose. I mean most companies take three months to deploy a patch and that's if we make it easy for them to deploy the patch. Lots of us are starting to get into more and more embedded devices. I don't know how many of you have these weird phone things, but they're a real pain in the butt to patch. Some are actually don't patch at all. Um, and yeah, we keep getting this wrong. And See, honestly, if you got a, if you have an appliance, I don't want anybody in this room to buy a security appliance until you've talked to the vendor and asked them, oh, by the way, how do you patch this thing? You'd be surprised what you find out. See, the problem with, the, with defense, from our perspective, at least from my perspective, it's a zero-sum game. We only need to have one hole, and we're fucked. You know, that's all it takes. So we had to be perfect every time, or at least good enough that they move on to somebody else. But really, in the end, if somebody is d determined to get into your network, it's a zero-sum game. They just only need one little problem. One little desktop someplace that didn't patch their Acrobat, as Jay was talking about earlier today. It's, it only takes one. And at the same time, companies have learned the lesson real well how much stuff has broken because of a patch. Um, that's on the corporate. It's really interesting, but fear, uncertainty, and doubt is something that I think more about when I'm talking about trying to convince companies to patch than about what I'm trying to get them to use open source software. FUD? I always thought it was fucked up data. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, have we have somebody over here. Nice. I think I'm about to get cut off here. <laughs> well, everything's already connected to the internet Hopefully anyway, they won't cut off our mics. Before, it's just all through NATs. The bad news is their time is up. The good news is there's a Q&A room that will fit Ten. like 12 of you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>